Welcome to the second episode of Road to Next Stage. This is the series where we take an in-depth look at all the new news regarding the upcoming Gear Chronicle reveals and take an in-depth look and understand what this can mean for the clan in the upcoming months and meta. With yesterday's livestream, we finally know what Chrono Fang Tiger as well as Chrono Tiger Rebellion is going to do. And these new cards are gonna change a lot for Gear Chronicle in terms of playstyles and their power potential for the future. In this video we're not going to take an in-depth look at how the skill works and what kind of interaction they provide for the clan. If you're more interested in that type of information then I highly suggest you guys to check out yesterday's card fed update links on top where I go in depth about the card skills as well as their interactions in the clan with the cards that were already revealed. Today I want to take a different approach and analyze how these cards will interact the way that we're gonna build and play Gear Chronicles moving forward once Astro Force hit the format. Before I can explain all the new playstyles that we can do with these new cards, let's have a quick summary of what the new Chrono Fang Tigers can do, as we have a couple of cards in the mix, because we have the Grade 1, the Grade 2, the Grade 3, and of course the Grade 4. The Grade 1, that's Chrono Tooth Tigar, has the ability Auto on Vanguard Circle. At the beginning of your right phase, draw a card, and the ability Auto, when this card is discarded from your hand during your turn, costs Counter this one, draw a card, and call this card to the record circle. So this card allows us to get some more act active draws during the early game when it's our vanguard, or when we discard it with different kinds of abilities, we can actively draw extra cards so we can search for our key pieces if we are needing in more units onto the board. Now for the grade two, we have Chrono by Tiger, and its ability is once again a vanguard skill with auto and vanguard circle. At the beginning of your right phase, draw a card and discard a card from your hand. So unlike the grade one Tiger, it doesn't plush you, but it allows you to draw Draw something and discard and the discard can then interact with other cards like the grade one tiger to then activate it to get some more draws if you're missing certain key pieces onto the board which can help you if you don't have the grade three as this interaction allows you to draw even more cards so you can potentially hit your grade three and then ride it because this is all before you are going to ride it as it's at the beginning of the ride phase and the second ability is just for super aggressive pushes as that is Act on rearguard circle once per turn, cost, discard a card from your hand, and this unit gets critical plus one until the end of turn. So once again, a discard cost, it might seem bad, but you can once again interact it with the grade one Tigar, or you can just help it to fuel for your conditions for Chrono Tiger Rebellion, which we'll go over in a second. Then for the grade three, you of course have Chrono Fang Tiger, and its first ability is just a little sledging skill, so I'm not gonna go over that in detail. And its personal skill is auto when rode upon by Chrono Tiger Rebellion, so specifically only its grade four version, cost, discard a card from your hand, and one of your vanguards gets critical plus one, drive plus one until the end of turn. And then of course for the big boss monster of the deck, the new archetype that is of course Chrono Tiger Rebellion. And this is where all the discarding is for, as its abilities auto on vanguard circle, when it attacks, activate all the effects below according to the number of cards in your hand. Five or less, choose two of your opponents from the rearguards and retire them. Three or less, three of your thunder units get power plus 10k until the end of turn. One or less, Cost, turn all of the cards in your damage zone face down. There is an important side note here. It doesn't specify how many. So even if all your damage is already face down or you have zero damage, you can still pay the cost by just declaring that you're doing that and then that's done. You paid the cost. And by paying the cost, you get the following. And this unit gets continuous Vanguard Circle. All of your opponent's guardians get shield minus 5k until the end of turn. This is huge because in a forest clan that's hitting for high numbers, reducing your opponent's shield value by 5k each and every single card they're placing on the guardian circle means it's almost impossible to guard effectively against your high numbers unless they have multiple PGs. But currently we aren't in a protect meta, we are in an exo meta which is transitioning towards a more forest focus meta, but all these clans only have a maximum of 4 PGs making this a very deadly skill. So now that you understanding of how these cards works, there are some major implications these cards bring to Gear Chronicle as they're gonna strive away from what we were doing with Lost Legend and we enter a new era that's all around Chrono Fang and Rebellion. Because the important thing is the ability of Chrono Tiger Rebellion. And there are three things you need to keep in mind as you need to have a hand side of five or less, three or less, or one or less when you go into this thing 
or at least be able to achieve this because the interesting part and the usefulness of this card in comparison to Mystery Flare and Idolize is that you don't have to meet the condition the moment you write into it. As now you can just get into it, use your different cards, like the Great 2 Act ability to discard multiple cards from your hand to meet a certain requirement and then attack with the Vanguard so you can achieve the amounts of skills that you want. So this card allows us to play three different playstyles with the new Gear Chronicles and a general rule of thumb when using the cards. So the general rule of thumb is you don't have to meet the entire condition the first time you go into this thing. And what I mean by that is you don't necessarily have to bet on having one or less cards on the first grade four turn. Because if your opponent is sitting at two or three damage, reducing their shield value might not actually do all that much. Especially if they're just gonna no guard most of your attacks because you're not pressuring them enough. And if they have one PG in end, they're gonna PG your Vanguard that comes probably with a crit and an extra drive check, thanks to Chrono Fang. And they're gonna take your rear guards and you basically didn't really achieve as much. This ability would be way more useful once you know they don't have a PG in hand and you're going to pressure them with each and every single attack. So if they're sitting at four damage and your Vanguard already comes with a crit and you have a high and you can generate one rear with the extra crit, which you can do with the grade two chrono by Tiger, and you're lucky to get drive check a crit so you can put it onto the other column. Another thing about Rebellion before we go into the different playstyles is that a lot of people are guessing that this is gonna be a very glass cannon deck because you need to play with that one card and head. Like I already explained, you don't necessarily have to play around that all the time if you aren't going in your kill turn, but even if you just gotta push for that on your first grade free turn, it doesn't mean your defense lifts afterwards because you have a triple drive Vanguard in combination with Chrono Fang, meaning you go from one card in hand back to four. That might not sound a lot and it probably isn't, but we have other cards like Naboo that allows us to draw even more cards during the battle phase, which means we can up the number of cards in our hand even more. And we're probably gonna run some draw triggers, especially with the draw PGs, meaning there is a chance that we hit one and then suddenly our hand size goes from one, two, four, five, six, maybe even higher, depending if we can put multiple cards to draw cards into our hand. So the idea that you are defenseless when once you go into Rebellion afterwards isn't really the case at all. Sure, you have less shield value than you typically would with a Lost Legend build, but the trading is that you are way more aggressive than your typical Lost Legend build. So with that explained, let's dive into the three different playstyles that we can use when piloting the new Chrono Fang Tiger build. The first one is the generic one where we just gonna play how the deck is supposed to function and we go into Rebellion and we use the different discard abilities to reduce our hand as much as possible. We can do this with the Stride skill as that allows us to discard something. We can then go with Chrono Fang's second ability to discard once again to give the Vanguard a crit and a drive. And then we have of course the ability of Chrono by Tiger that discards another card. And we have other cards that potentially can discard even more that comes in this set as well. Like the Battle Dora unit that was revealed at the beginning of the reveals of Astro Force. Also what we can do is just call units on top of each other if we just want to mine it even more and more on a more hard basis so we get to that one card in hand requirement. So basically that is the normal way to play the deck by just using the abilities of different cards to achieve your hand size condition for Rebellion. But in most cases you're not gonna go for that route because we have two way more useful strategies to apply that actually makes more sense and get more value out of our cards. The first one is being super aggressive as Chrono Rebellion's ability is actually pretty aggressive early on, as you can reduce the shield value, comes with the crit and the extra drive, get more power, retire the units, so that really screams aggression. So the way that we can utilize that and get the most benefit out of that is just by going ham from turn one onwards. Just call all your cards onto the field and just keep swinging at your opponent. They might retire your cards, but you don't care because you're just gonna call more from your hand. So the moment you go into your grade three and then immediately into your grade four, you have one card in hand or, or enough cards in hand to discard everything for the abilities to get the drive and stride. And then you have one card in hand and then you go ham and probably kill your opponent on the spot. That is the super aggressive way. That, however, is more glass cannony because in the early game, by slamming everything on the board, you don't have any shield value left. People can damage deny you, but in this build, you not you don't really care for that. As rebellion just flip, flips everything face down, 
that can still be zero and you can still get the ability off. So damage denying this build in particular might not really do that much for them. But we also can take a more defensive approach and this utilize the way how Chrono Fang Tiger Rebellion is also worded with the fact that you need to throw everything face down. As just explained, zero is also enough. You can basically guard very aggressively on early game. And this will also combat the whole glass cannon sigma the deck has because by guarding super aggressive early game, you can potentially sit at one, maybe zero damage the moment that you go into rebellion. Then you throw everything face down, which is one or two, one, one, two, maybe zero cards. And then you have maybe five, six cards in hand at the end of the turn. Then having that uh, lower hand size don't really matter you all that much, even in an Axel meta, because you still can take a couple of damage, which means you can hit defensive triggers against Axel and against force decks, you can just take a giant attack and it doesn't really matter for you because you can still eat some damage and then start defending, which will make the deck more survivable and you can then go into a second rebellion the following turn and then probably kill them afterwards. Also another thing that people shouldn't underestimate with these cards is that Chrono Tiger Rebellion is miles ahead above Mystery Flare. People are saying that Mystery Flare is in some regards a better version of this card if you can get the 13 bind off. But there's your problem. You're not going to get that off on a consistent basis, especially on your first right. This However, you can just get this condition off whenever you want. You can 100% of the time completely activate it by just sim simply calling units on top of each other and minusing your hand. This is big because this means you can go into this thing while your opponent is still at grade 2 if you went first. And that is huge because then that means they can't hardly guard your attacks. And you can say, well, they're just going to eat some of your attacks. Well, we have a Vanguard that comes with a crit, so they cannot easily take that, especially with the triple drive on top of that. Then we have potentially a rigard Chrono by Tiger, that can also come with a crit, so that's another attack they cannot really take, and that will be 20k, and we still have a force marker that we can distribute somewhere. And then with the third attack, well, if we put a crit trigger from our drive checks with triple drive, there's a highly likely chance that there was one would be one. So that means they cannot easily take some damage and by guarding those attacks that means they need to dedicate a lot of cards from hand which isn't really that ideal for the deck for your opponent so this is going to be a super aggressive version of what we're used to with gear chronicle and also an interesting thing about this card is that for the very first time gear chronicle has actual direct retires we never had that we were always around rewind stopping cards to the bottom of the deck and now rebellion is like no Screw that, I'm gonna retire two of your front row units. Which is also pretty pretty nice because that actively minus your opponent two cards onto the field. And if they wanted to rush you back when you rush them early game, well, you get free retires, break their interceptors, maybe great freeze without actually doing anything. And that means your opponent needs to dedicate even more cards from hand next turn to basically refill the board if they want to pressure you. So overall, these new Chrono Fan cards are going to make a big change for Gear Chronicle, where we had a more combo oriented deck that was a bit slower as it typically, typically took two strides or three pseudo stride turns to actively tried to kill your opponent, that's the moment that you were pushing games, unless you were super lucky when you got 13 binds on your first turn when you go into a mystery flare. And from that, we go to something like Crown of Tiger Rebellion that is live on the very first turn when your opponent is still at grade two. That is pretty nuts if you think about it. This goes in the same category as all these crazy cards like we now we have with Revier that can restand all a couple of times. Also, Claret Sword Dragon is actively doing pretty pretty well for itself. And this all falls in the same speed level as those decks. And this is probably the new era where we go into the speed force decks that can just whip out insane attacks and insane pressure while your opponent is still at grade 2 to combat these super aggressive Axel decks that cannot sustain these onslaught of brute forcing attacks. So I'm very excited what the future reveals are going to bring us as maybe we're going to get a bit more draw skills because we only have Naboo at this point that can draw abilities and if we get some more cards that can draw in the attack phase that either you don't use Countless that are maybe in, in restriction with the Rebellion or maybe use the Soul to some extent because 
we want to do it in a battle phase so we can end up with as high of a hand size number as possible. But that's basically everything for this episode. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new rebellion cards, how this will, how you're going to try to use them with the new cards for Gear Chronicle, and are you going to match and match them with the previous support? Because you can throw in maybe one or two rebellions into the old Lost Legend builds just to have an emergency button. I'm very curious what you guys think of everything. Let me know in the comments down below. And I see you guys in the very next episode of the Road to Next Stage, wherever that might bring us. This video has been brought to you by our lovely Patreons over at patreon.com slash Insider. You guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head to patreon.com slash Insider and become a Patreon today. Well, with that said, I'm Mr. Timely, and I'll see you guys in the next one!